In this demonstration, I want to show you how you can use Google Fonts as either web fonts or downloadable fonts that you can use in your computer. Recently, at the time of making this video, uh, Google Fonts changed the way that their website looked. So if you've ever used it before, it is a little bit different. All the features are basically still there. They're just accessed in different ways now. So if you go to fonts.google.com, you're going to get the new web version of their font direct directory. Okay, so let me show you how you can start to look at fonts. Uh, first of all, if you just go to fonts.google.com, it's going to land you on their directory page. And this is one of those pages. If you look at the little scroll bar over here, you'll notice that it scrolls forever and ever and ever, okay? Um, and the, the trick is that um, depending on your network connection, you're going to have to sort of wait for them to load. If you scroll really fast, then you're going to have to basically wait until the stuff gets loaded up in. But you can see that there are tons and tons of fonts. So there might be some things that you want to filter for. Like, for instance, if you know that you want to use only a sans serif, for instance. And by the way, sans versus regular serif is sans you'll notice that the letters are all very, very clean. Whereas a serif, let's find a serif on here, like Slabo is a serif. If you look, it's got these little dippy-doo things. They're called serifs. Like on the bottom of the A, you see that there are these flat marks. Um, on the S, you see that there's a little flip up on the beginning and the end of the letter form, and so forth. Those little things are called serifs. If you don't see those, then they are typically going to be sans serifs, like this is very clean. It doesn't have any of those serifs, or as I referred to it as a dippy-doo, <laughs> flippy-doo, whatever you want to call it. There are other different types of fonts, though. If you click on the search icon over here, it'll slide over, and you can also see that there are display fonts, handwriting fonts, monospace fonts. Monospace fonts are ones where each letter takes up the same amount of space. You'll notice that these are not monospaced, you see that the letter I takes up, for instance, a different amount of width than the letter S, right? Those are proportional fonts. Monospace uh, is where, uh, if I were to basically deselect all of these, you can see that monospace, the letter I takes up the same amount of space as the letter S, okay? So they all take up the same amount of space. So uh, let's look at handwriting fonts, for instance. Handwriting pretty obvious what it's going to be. It's an intended to simulate handwriting. If we look at display fonts, these are going to be fonts that are not really intended to be ever read in long blocks of text. Um, they're typically more elaborate and they're a little bit harder to read, which is why um, they're better as larger uh, type sizes. Okay, uh, sans serifs, I just described what a sans serif is and a serif, right? So these are some things that you could filter. For instance, if you know that you want text that is going to be in large blocks, you typically are just going to want serif and sans serif. I do not recommend using handwriting for long blocks of text. It's just not a good idea. The other thing too is uh, if you want the number of styles to be really high, then it basically is going to knock out anything that only has like one or two styles. When I say styles, this is what I mean. If I click on styles, you'll see that we have all these different options. We have thin, thin italic, extra light, blah, 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 right? There are a lot of fonts, however, that only have like one style. Those are going to be like, for instance, this one is only has five styles, which might be fine, but this one, dank one, only has one style. That's it. You can't really do anything else with it. That's it. It's just, this is regular. Okay. That's the style. If you're looking for a headline, like a heading or something, a lot of times you can get away with something that has one to two styles. But if you want to be really flexible with your options, you need to increase your styles so that there are more of them. Okay. And then that will automatically filter stuff out so you don't have to look through as much. So this is a way that you can filter stuff out without having, you know, a way too much stuff on the page uh, to, to, you know, go through if you know sort of in general what you're looking for. And you can see that you're viewing uh, 78 out of over 800 font families. That's because we did some uh, sorting and filtering. Okay. You can also uh, really quickly, like if you know what you're going to need for it to say, like if, for instance, we were to 
I don't know, just pick one of these. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Let's just say that we wanted to pick this one. And we want to say, uh, hi, my name is Lee Cotner. So you could look at this. It's going to be a heading. You could make a decision approximately about how big you'd want it to be. Um, and you can also look at the different weights. These are the different styles, OK? Um, you can look at different sizes. If it's a heading, it'll probably be a little bit bigger, right? And so you could say, okay, well, I like that. Maybe I'd want it to be medium size. It's a little bit heavier. Um, I could also go up to semi-bold and so forth. Like, So you can play around with that as well. And if you want, you can also click on the specimen. Well, actually, really quickly, let's look at custom. And you can also look really quickly like what a numbers look like. Uh, because in the numbers, you might think that that's kind of a silly thing, but the numbers a lot of times look remarkably interesting or remarkably uninteresting. And sometimes you need certain numbers in the alphabet to look distinctive. Like, for instance, sometimes you don't want the 1 to also look like the letter L, if, that's, if that matters, depending on what you're doing. Um, if we were to go back here, though, and uh, and you see that it reset it whenever I... Uh, change this around so we could go back to saying hi my name is Lee or whatever the other thing that you could do is you could say see specimen and it'll show you everything about the the type it shows you all the styles it also will allow you to see like what some popular pairings are with other fonts right so the one that's popular there's some ones that are popular to pair with this and what it does is it looks at the pairings that are out on the web it's not necessarily pairing it for you, you know, like like professionals sat around one day and said, these look good with this font. What it does is it goes and it takes uh, statistical information off of websites that use it, and it sees what other things are being used in conjunction. Okay, so that that can be helpful sometimes too. And then uh, if you want to add a font so that you can use it, basically, anytime you see this little plus symbol, you can add the font. And what it'll do is it'll add it to your current collection so that you can use it. I'm not going to add this one. It's not one that I necessarily would want. Um, but let's just uh, let's take a, a peek at some different ones that I might want to use. OK, so um, if I wanted to search for a specific font, I could also type it right up here. So there's one that I, I think is kind of attractive, but it doesn't necessarily fit within my filters. So if I were to take my filters off, then it then it fits. I don't know that I'd want to use this. I just wanted to show you that as as an example. Um, and uh, so maybe I'd want to add that font. Um, I could always click this plus button and you see down here it pops up and it says one family was selected. Um, something else that I might want to check out is Poppins. It's just another one that I could use. I kind of like this as a sans serif. I'll add that as well. And then uh, there's another one It'll actually start to, uh, and all right, this is the one. I just was typing it, and it automatically started pulling up ones that started to match, okay? And so you can see that there are a lot of these uh, Allegria ones. And so if I, I, this is the one that I was looking for, um, the Sans version. Um, and I don't want the one that's capitalized. And so I could add that to my collection as well. Right, so I don't know that these are the ones I'm going to use necessarily, but what I can do is I can show you how to move forward from there, down where it says three fam family selected. You can see that I've got them. I could also subtract them from here. And what this does is it shows you how to embed your font if you're using it as a web font. Um, it, it shows you how to embed it in your page. So what you would do is you would put this in the top part of your page in the uh, head. And you typically want your fonts to get loaded so that they load at the very beginning of the page. And I'll show you in a web demo, if, if you're in a web class, I can show you where that's going to go. But this would get uh, embedded at the top of the page. And then um, the way that you would specify your CSS is down here. And it, it gives you a really simple way of working on it. It tells you the load time as well. If you have all of these, it tells you that it's moderate. If I were to subtract something, for instance, like if I subtracted that, you can see that it's going to load a lot faster. If I were to customize, what it allows me to do then is go and click on all of the different styles that I want to add. And you do need to do that. You can't just um, 
have them all come up at once. And so if I add a whole lot of these styles, then what is going to happen is it's going to increase my load time. But I, I might need, for instance, Poppins Light, and I might want uh, bold, semi-bold, right? And then it's still in the moderate range. Um, you know, and I don't think I'd want anything other than uh, regular. For some of these fonts, if you just style it as italics, it'll work. And some of them, it won't work unless you actually uh, have the font available. Like regular 400 is typically the standard weight for most fonts. And so uh, if you have a standard font, but you haven't loaded, for instance, you haven't loaded one of the bold or the light versions, it will also go ahead and bold, sort of do a faux bold for you or an italic bold. But if you are only, for instance, loading like this light one, then the italic and bold might not work as, you know, just uh, simple applications. So that's just something to know. The next thing that you might want to do before you actually try to use them is uh, you could also take a look really quickly at featured and it will help you in some ways. You could look at things that a lot of people use as headlines, high impact. You can check all of this stuff out, right? So that's a basic overview of how you can do this. And then uh, the other last little thing that I want to show you is if I were to click on this preview and share button, you can see that it, it pops up with all this different information of all the things that I've chosen. And Honestly, this doesn't go at all with the Poppins, right? So I might get rid of that and look up something different if I actually care. Um, I actually might like the Laura better. It shows you how to uh, do your link, or you can click on import. This is not something I'm going to really uh, focus on right now, but if you had to do this, like if you're using a content management system and you had to pull that in, you can do it that way. Otherwise, this is the standard way of doing it. You would put this in the HTML and then this in the CSS. If you are, however, going to be downloading it, so let's say that you're not a web designer, or let's say that you are a web designer, but you also might have to create picture files with type, or you might have to create um, other print accompanying print documents to go with the type, then you're going to want to download stuff. So if you hover over this little download link, it's going to ask you, do you want to download it directly or do you want to use sky fonts? Um, download direct means that when you download it, you're either going to have to put it in your fonts folder, or if you have a font management system, you can uh, use your font management system. On Windows, you can easily pop your stuff right into your uh, fonts folder. On a Mac, uh, Macs come with FontBook, um, and you can add your fonts to FontBook, and then they'll show up in all your applications. If you were to download them, and you have to, wherever you download them, you have to keep them there if you want to always be able to use them. Sky fonts, uh, the, and, and I will back up and say the one problem with putting fonts into your actual font folder is that when you put them in your font folder, they stay active. And if you have too many fonts activated on your computer at once, it will hog up all the memory. So in that case, you typically do want to use some sort of font management tool. And if you want to use FontBook, you can. FontBook will automatically activate and keep things activated. So you have to remember to deactivate them if you don't want to hog all the memory up, if you use thousands of fonts. And if you want to pay for a version, there's a really great version of a font management tool that is made by a company called Extensus and it's called uh, Suitcase or Fusion. Okay, and then Sky Fonts is something that is really kind of handy where it allows you to browse stuff. You install this little application on your computer and the thing that's nice about it is that it works with more than just Google Fonts. If you later were to become a professional and subscribe to Font Foundries, then it'll allow you to pull fonts from all different uh, types of foundries in. Um, but otherwise, you can install Sky Fonts and you can uh, just cruise through stuff and download it from there. Okay, that'll end the introduction to how to use Google Fonts. So go ahead and pick the fonts that you would like to use. Spend time uh, really looking through them to get the right stuff for your project um, and either download them or get the code and uh, move forward to go ahead and start using them either on the web or in your print project.